we're going to look at a nice and quick algebra problem. And the way that we are going to solve it is by using a couple of tools from the arithmetic of complex numbers. So let's jump into it. So we want to suppose that we have real numbers A, B, C, and D, and they satisfy three conditions. So first off, we know A squared plus B squared equals 1, and C squared plus D squared equals 1. And also we know that AC plus BD is equal to 0, and our goal is to find AB plus CD. Okay, so like I said, we're going to use some tools from the arithmetic of complex numbers, so let's jump into it. So first off, what I want to do is set alpha equal to A plus BI, and notice that means that the modulus of alpha squared, which is equal to alpha times alpha conjugate, is equal to A plus BI times A minus BI, which is A squared plus B squared, which is equal to one. But also, we know that the modulus of a complex number is always non-negative, and so since it squares to one, we know that in fact, the modulus of alpha has to be equal to one. So let's maybe box that because that's gonna be important to notice. Okay, so now let's also set beta equal to C minus DI. You could set it to equal C plus DI, but this actually helps out with the arithmetic with what we're given and stuff. Okay, so notice that this means that the modulus of beta is equal to one using a very, very similar process to what we just did up here showing that the modulus of alpha is one. Next, what we'll do is take the product of alpha and beta. So here we've got alpha times beta, that's equal to A plus BI times C minus DI. So multiplying that out, we see that the real part will be AC plus BD. And so we get that from A times C, and then BI times negative DI. So notice we get negative BD times I squared, but those minus signs cancel, giving us a plus right here. So next, we'll have that this is plus I times, well, let's see what we have. We have B times C minus A times D. B, C minus A, D. Okay, next we know that we're given that A, C plus B, D is equal to zero. That's built into the statement of the problem. So that means we can cancel all of this out to zero. Okay, then next we can use the fact that the modulus of alpha times beta is equal to the modulus of alpha times the modulus of beta, which is equal to one on one hand, but on the other hand, from this equation right above, it'll be equal to the absolute value of BC minus AD. So notice that that tells us that alpha times beta is equal to just I times plus or minus one from this little equation right here. So we can replace this BC minus AD with plus minus one. And that actually brings us into two cases. So the first case is that alpha times beta is equal to I. So that would be like plus one times I. And then the second case would be alpha times beta equals minus I. So let's maybe bring those up. On the last board, we introduced two complex numbers, alpha and beta, which were A plus BI and C minus DI. And then furthermore, we used the three given equations to break this down into two final cases. Alpha times beta was I and alpha times beta was negative I. Now we're gonna look at each of these cases. So let's jump into this first one. Alpha times beta is equal to I. So let's start by taking this entire equation and multiplying by the inverse of beta. In other words, the multiplicative inverse of beta. So that's gonna give us alpha on the left-hand side of the equation, and that's gonna give us I times beta inverse on the right-hand side of the equation. But we know that alpha is of the form A plus BI, and then we have I times, well, beta inverse, will be equal to C plus DI. 
So let's maybe talk our way through that. That's because C plus DI times C minus DI is equal to C squared plus D squared, which is equal to one, like we saw uh, previously. Now we'll multiply out the right-hand side of the equation and get I times C minus D, and that's because I times I is negative one. But looking at the real part of the left and the right, and the imaginary part of the left and the right, we see that C will be equal to B, looking at the imaginary parts, and D will be equal to negative A, and that's looking at the real parts of each side of this equation. But if C is B and D is minus A, then we can take this equation and simplify it very easily. This will be A times B plus B times negative A, but that clearly simplifies down to zero. Okay, so now let's look at this second case when alpha times beta is minus i, and we're gonna approach this pretty much the same way. So let's multiply by beta inverse. That will give us a plus bi equals minus i times beta inverse, which is still c plus di. Then multiply out that right-hand side. That'll give us minus i times c, and then plus d. Comparing real and imaginary parts, we see that B is equal to negative C and that A is equal to D. But notice that is kind of the opposite of what's going on here, but it will still create the same result. So that means we have AB plus CD will be the same thing as plus negative AB, which will give us zero. So either way we look at it, we get zero from this object AB plus CD. And that's a good place to stop.